the worship this morning was actually too good. That was actually too good. That was so good. That was a Jedediah leading worship. And then I, I don't know everybody else's names, but man, it was so good. And, um, and just so you know, I taught these guys everything that they know. They, they, they subscribed to my worship e-course. Jedediah, you know, right? They had to take loans to do it because it's like thousands of dollars. But anyway, dude, let's give one more big thank you to this incredible team from Bethel, Reading. You guys are awesome. We're so excited to have you here. And you guys are going to be here tonight. Is that right? Six o'clock. And, and, and you guys are just going to be going after it. Is that right? You guys are just going to be going after it, just, just showing up and seeing whatever Jesus wants to do. Is that right? Man, I can't wait. Man, this was, this was so good. <sighs> yeah. I had to like pop my ears because I was going so deep during worship. <laughs> All the divers in the house were like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Almost got the bends there during worship. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Uh, <laughs> I cracked myself up. Um, we had such a great time in the, in the, in the 9 a.m. Um, and th- this is, this is, cr- we live in like the, the co- you know, there's this narrative out there that like Seattle is like this difficult place. It's the least church, st- 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 Washington is the least church state. Uh, th- that's not actually true. Uh, yeah. We've got, especially after COVID, you know, um, <laughs> Washington's no longer the least church state, okay? Like we, we got some of the most bomb churches in our region. And, you know, you know like this is, this is such a cool place to, to live. In fact, just south of here is, is an incredible church, such a prophetic church um, called New Horizon. They hosted, they do an annual prophetic conference called Judah Arise. And this year they had like my favorite people there. They had uh, Jeremy Nelson, you know, who's just, 500% revival all the time. He's just like, ah, ah, you know, man, I love stinking Jeremy Nelson. And then the guys, they had the author of the Bible uh, there. <laughs> Brian stinking Simmons, the, the author of the Passion Translation. No joke. I love Brian Simmons. I love the Passion Translation. I preach from the, the Passion Translation um, and stuff. And, and then they had, they had Richard Gordon and the team there. <laughs> I was, fo- I was following on, on, online, you know, I was watching, and, and man, these guys are going out, you could just tell, it, it was thick, amazing, and their schedule was so intense, like, I honestly didn't, didn't think it would actually work out to have them come and to, and to minister, I just thought, you know, if that they'd be already booked, um, if they were booked, they'd be way too tired, you know, they got two hours of sleep last night, no joke, um, and, and yet they were here, bright and early, they served so well at our 9 a.m., I, I actually met, I met Richard Gordon back in 2015. In fact, I still remember the very first time I saw him. He came into, the, I had no idea who he was. He came into the building with one of the biggest smiles on his face. He had a huge, huge, huge smile. He looked at me like he knew me. <laughs> and uh, so I looked at him like I knew him. <laughs> come here, come here, buddy. You know, and, and you know, and he, and he and I just remember us seeing, this is the way I remember, okay? Sometimes the way you remember it isn't necessarily the way that things happen. This is, this is what I've built in my memory. And I just remember you coming in here on the front row, and then you just coming up, and I just remember us like hugging, you know? And then uh, skip a beat. I don't know when it was, but it wasn't much longer after that. You were literally singing Coldplay songs to me in the microphone. Do you remember that? Yeah. It, there a couple hundred people here not having a clue what was going on. You know, but, but that was like the beginning of a beautiful, of a beautiful relationship. And ever since then, I've just, I've just considered Richard a brother. I've just considered him a uh, family. Um, like I was kind of shocked in the first service. He's like, I, I, he actually said he wants to take up membership here at Ezra. I was like shocked. I was shocked by that, you know, that he, uh, that he actually wants to be a, a member here. And so in order to do that, we have to have a quorum. Uh, uh, would our elders just uh, let me know if you're an elder. Wait, wait, wait. Would somebody make a motion that Richard and, 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 and Libby would be uh, members? Gail, uh, someone second. Thanks, Grant. All in favor, say aye. aye. You guys, it is such an honor to welcome one of our newest members to Seattle Revival Center. Would you welcome Richard Gordon? Ah! What's up, bro? Ah! That's the best. Is that in the best time? Dude, we want to pray for you. Okay. Because you look like you need prayer, buddy. You've been working so hard. 
and you, and I'll give you two bottles. Oh, yeah, come on, come my on, come voice on. has gone up and screaming for three days. Some of the glory is so funny. Come over here, Richard. Come over. We, we, we lay hands on our new, we, we pour oil, on, we pour oil on our, on our new members. Please anoint me. So, Andrew, you just want to come up here? I'm getting ordained. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. What's this Andrew's <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Father, we just thank you, Lord, for bringing Richard to this church. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you're, you're bringing the brightest and best in this time. We just receive him and install him as a new member. Lord, we just thank you, Father, um, that he's read our constitution and our bylaws. Um, we just thank you, Lord, that he's willing to even serve at our, at, at our, at our slider door. Uh, from time to time, oh, uh, Father, we just double time. Go yeah, double in the parking lot duty, <laughs> Lord, we just, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this incredible weekend. Thank you, Lord, for the deposit oh. these guys have made in our region, and Lord, and we just, we bless this this man of God. We bless this team. We bless New Horizon, Pastor Dwayne Wolf, Lord, that, this incredible conference in the region. Lord, we say, Lord, blow up this region with your power, with your glory. We pray for every church, Father, every pad, Lord, just do something so extraordinary in this region. And Lord, continue to bless Bethel for sending teams all throughout the world to bring the fire of God and revival. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for Richard, this fire starter, this catalyst of awakening and joy. Lord, we bless him today. We bless Libby. We bless their incredible family. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll, I'll help you up here. <laughs> I'm a member. I love you, man. Go, I'm a member. Go. I'm a member. I'm a member. Look at that. Turn to someone next to you and say, I'm becoming a member too. I'm becoming a member too. I've been preaching for the last uh, probably 48 hours and, and screaming. And I don't know why, but <clears throat> when I've been prophesying recently, I just start, like the person's right in front of me, but I'm like, the Lord said us. I'm like, I don't know why I'm shouting. I'm like, why are you shouting, Rich? It's crazy. Oh, I love this house. Uh, this, I said to my team, if I wasn't at staff at Bethel Church, I would love to come here and beg Darren for a job. Uh, this is my second home. This was the place that uh, in this building launched me into ministry outside of um, Bethel Church. Uh, Darren was the first person outside of Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton to believe in me. Actually, before Bill and Chris said, I see something in your life, we want you to come on staff. Darren saw me and he said, there's something on your life. I want you to come and be with me. Introduced me to Bobby Connor and, and different prophets and said, Rich, there's a, a call of God in your life. And he pulled something out of me and now I've been traveling all over. And, uh, but he was a catalyst in America for me. And uh, so this is my house, this is my home. I saw um, my mom at the back there, Jeanette. Love you, Jeanette. Why don't we give it up for Jeanette in the back? <clears throat> love it. And, uh, and Andrea, I just love when you pray for me. There's a few times whenever Andrea prays for me, I'm just out cold. And I love you. You're the drunkest engineer that I know. <clears throat> and I'm an engineer, so... I got a master's in electronic engineering and my background is satellites and military encryption, decryption of data and um, academia and uh, lecturer and for chemical engineers. And, and it's just good to be in the same company as drunk engineers. Do we have any engineers in the house? Oh, I love the engineers. Wave at me if you're an engineer. Love you. Love you. If the Park family's here, why don't the Park family stand quickly? <coughs> Um, I want to honor you guys. You, uh, you've, you've housed our Bethel students. You've created a home for us here. Josh, you've made us look like geniuses by setting things up. Daniel raised money and sowed money to come back to his hometown to minister alongside me and my team. Uh, there's a real heart that this family carries for the region. I want to honor you publicly. What you've sown into this place, you're going to reap in family, 
you're going to reap in revival. Daniel, there's a call of God on your life. I see a fire coming inside of you, Daniel. And I see the Lord saying over you, Daniel, I've called you to count in the city. And I've called you to count in the city. And I see family coming to you. And I see the gift of family on your life, Daniel. God says you'll be a man that will carry family and revival. And Josh, just raise your hands. God says of you, Josh, this new season you've just stepped into, there's going to be double grace for it. I see you're not just an administrator, you're a minister. And I see you administrating glory, administrating glory, administrating glory. What you've laid down in your last season, God says you're going to pick up triple in your next season. You will be, the Lord will provide for you financially in a new, in a, a, a new way. God, mark this man with the glory in Jesus' name. Why don't we give the Park family a big round of applause? <laughs> and if you're part of my team, why don't you come and stand up in front of here? Senior, why don't you come and stand right up in front of here? Oh, we got, I, got, I got two of you. Look at that. Eh? Well done. Look at that. Karen, why don't you give it for Karen? It's from Germany. <laughs> Karen's from Germany. Jedi's from India and the Netherlands. We got Destiny over here from South Africa. Come on. Well, let me, let me get them to introduce themselves. You know, when I first came here, there used to be flags everywhere. Hey, this was just like, it was like just charismatic flag, crazy. Just flags upon flags. I remember being in the front row, getting hit by one of the big flags. Remember those big flags? Those flags that were like so big, they would hit these things like, whoosh. I've never seen such big flags in a church before. Man, and then I just—I remember getting whacked on the head by one of them when I was here. I want you to turn to someone next to you and say, "You're in a phenomenal church." Honestly, it was on this carpet <coughs> that the Lord anointed me, put a glory on me, and I got an upgrade in ministry and the prophetic and the supernatural and the gift of signs and wonders. It's in this house. I remember driving up here and I remember um, as I was driving up an angel of the Lord appeared to me on my left hand side in the car he said you're going to go up you're going to walk through a gate of first love and as you walk in there was a swirl in the sanctuary of the glory of God resting and nations were coming and regions were touched Bob Jones appeared to me in the vision and he popped up I've never shared this publicly and he said my boy, you're going to meet my friend Bobby Connor. He's going to be there. Tell him the number 12, 5. He'll know exactly what it means. There's going to be a great move of the Holy Spirit that comes in this region and in this church. I remember walking up and I walked through those doors over there and they didn't know, but the intercessors went and prayed. And they felt the Lord say the theme would be gates of first love. And they put a big plaque above the door that said the gates of first love. As I walked in, I was like, God, you must be up to something. I walked into the sanctuary. I saw the swirling world of angels that were just in this room. And I went into an encounter. And then the Lord said, He's going to bring the nations. He's going to bring people from that region. They're going to come. I went up to Bobby Connor. I said, Bob Jones appeared to me. He said, tell you the number 12-5. And Bobby turned to me. He said, yep, yep, yep. There's grace for government. There's grace for government. Don't tell anyone I said so. Oh, man, I just did. Come on. Oh. And he said, and Bob's walking the meeting right now. Uh, he doesn't like attention on him, so don't tell anyone that he's here, but he's walking the meeting right now. And I just did. I'm a, oh, well, sorry, Bobby. <laughs> he's walking the meeting right now. It was uh, two or three days later, Darren phoned me. He said, I feel like I'm supposed to go 100 days. What do you think? I feel like we're supposed to extend the meetings. I said, Darren, I really feel the Lord on this, the Lord on this, the Lord on this. He said, I'm nervous for what happened in the past with my family and all that. I said, I feel God on this thing. And a, and a move of God struck out of this place with Charlie Champ and a bunch of people. And, and you're part of, I believe, a real significant house. This house, the Lord loves this land. I asked one of my friends, I said, what do you see here? She said, I see a crack in the ground and deep within I see the wells of revival. And as we worshiping, I see us striking the ground and the wells of revival are coming up. I sense it, I feel it, I feel it. And it's not just an old well, there's a fresh well that's coming. And I was like, wow, 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 Salome, wow, 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 wow. Yeah, she's from Switzerland, that's what she said. Yep, yep. Man, so this is a special place. I think it's one of the most significant churches I've ever been to. So turn to someone next to you and say, I'm so glad you're here. 
Send someone next to you and say, I'm becoming a member. <laughs> I'm getting that oil on my forehead. I'm just teasing. Oh, man. Oh, I believe God's going to do a mighty thing here. Last time I was here, man, who was here last time with those packed out nights, the glory hits? Woo, man, as, as we started to worship with my friends and the glory, that thick, weighty glory filled the room. There's nothing like it. Oh, Jesus, God, we want more. We want more. I pray, God, not a man, but the son of man we would touch. Not a teaching, but the teacher we would touch, God. Oh, Jesus, I'm done with boring meetings. I need to meet him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I give you permission. I give you permission, whatever we say, I want you to get taken, raptured up, sucked up into Jesus. That's Darren's heart. Darren's, Darren's the, yep, 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 That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Oh, so my friends tease me. They go, yep, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right. They don't even know that I'm basically impersonating Darren, who's actually impersonating Bobby Connor. So I'm a cheap imitation. Just joking. There's no one like me. I'm just... (laughs) Man, anything could happen right here. I feel the faith in the room. Oh, turn to someone next to you and say, anything could happen. (laughs) Man, people could get healed here. People with incurable diseases could get healed here. I've seen it right over there. I've seen it over there. I've seen it over here. Seen it over there. I remember praying for a man over here filled with demons. He'd walked away from the Lord. He was serving Satan actually. And he had pentagrams around his neck. And he came and he walked here and he said, I've been tormented for for days and days and days. I want to be set free. Big man. He was about this big, wide, huge. And we prayed for him and he started just screaming. Ah! And man, he got so radically set free. He sat on and he wept because Jesus touched his heart. If there's anyone here that's been struggling with sleep, I believe that Jesus is the answer. If you've been struggling with anxiety and sleep, I believe Jesus is the answer. If there's been a cult in your background and you found yourself here, I believe Jesus can set all things free. If you've been abused in your past, I believe Jesus is the one that will bring freedom to you. And I saw that same man in Reading and he came up to me. He says, do you remember when you prayed for me? I said, of course I remember. You screamed in my face as loud as possible. He said, I've been walking free ever since. Oh, Jesus, we just thank you. This is a house of healing. Man. This is a house of healing. This is a, this is a miracle house right here. People will walk through these doors that have been hurt by churches and they'll be healed in this place. Oh, this is the, one of my favorite places in the world. Oh man, God touch me while I'm here. Oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Who am I going to give it to? Uh, I just want to introduce some of my friends. So I just share where you're from and... I'm Eno Chen. Um, I actually live in Burien, and I met Richie through um, Bethel School of Technology. And um, whenever he comes to town, I get adopted by the family, and I adopt them into my heart. And uh, it's just uh, such an honor to be in this house. And I just want to share, like, your, oh, your husband and what happened with the children? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. My husband is a school counselor in an elementary school. And uh, two nights ago, when we were praying for the kids uh, downstairs, kids were just being filled by the Holy Spirit. They were, they were on the ground. They were just completely yielded to the power of God. We got to see that. I just believe that. That's the beginning of something happening here in the Pacific Northwest. Ooh, God comes from the grassroots up, from the humble and the childlike. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. And it, she was telling me her husband's got a master's in education, uh, works with elementary kids. And as these 10 year olds and nine year olds were shaking on the ground and sobbing, her husband tears starts filling her eyes 
And she says, for 15 years, I've known my husband and I haven't seen tears in his eyes like that ever. And it was his birthday when he came. God was saying over your husband, he was saying, I'm giving you a new view of the call of ministry on your life. You may be an elementary teacher to kids and he oversees about 500 kids, but God's put a call and he'll never be able to go back. There was just, it was one of the wildest meetings I've ever been in. There were like 40, 50 kids shaking. There was sobbing. Power of God was resting on them. Nine-year-olds, 10-year-olds, five-year-olds, just like, oh. Their parents would walk in the back. This is two nights ago. Walk in, walk in the back to get them. Mom just starts sobbing. Couldn't believe to see their child on the ground shaking. Ah, oh, Jesus can do anything. Jesus can do anything. Oh, man. Jesus can do anything. Man. Oh, you guys know Alyssa, but she's going to introduce herself. So my name is Alyssa. I'm another adoptee on the team. Um, since, as most of you know here, since I was healed here nine and a half months ago, right over there. Um, <laughs> um, I, you know, been birthed into a new life. So, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. That's just wild. You know, <clears throat> when she came with me to the conference, um, we actually felt the Holy Spirit. We felt that, and I chatted with Darren, we felt like, I felt like she wasn't supposed to speak and share her testimony at the conference. It was just, there were hundreds of people there. She wasn't supposed to. But it's because the Lord wanted her not to be celebrated as a story, but to be celebrated as a person. And I'd want to just say publicly, you're way more than a story. You're way more than a miracle story. You are a beautiful woman called of God, that you're, you are an incredible gift. Who you are is wonderful. Who you are is lovely. Jesus loves you. You are not a story. You are in the most beautiful of daughters. Oh, and we just celebrate you. Can we celebrate her now? That was awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that good? Jesus, you know what? Jesus loves you more than your miracle and your breakthrough. He wants to touch you. He wants to be with you more than that miracle, that breakthrough, that story, that moment, that word. Oh, He loves you. You are the apple of His eye. Oh, the pearl of great price, that testament, that, that whole story, that parable, that they sold everything, bought the whole field, sold everything just to get the, the pearl of great price. People say it's the kingdom. I believe it's you. He sold everything everything to get you to be you are as pearl of great price ah yo Trish hi guys my name is Trish I'm originally from Miami and one of Rich's interns um, received so much from this house I actually came in May and I sat on the front row I think the third seat and I cried the entire service um, and I just believe that today is going to be a day of encounter so maybe you're going to meet Jesus. So, Slap someone next to you and say, you're getting encountered. <laughs> this, is our, this is our worship leader from Argentina. Um, hi, my name is Cecia. Uh, I'm from Argentina. Uh, I'm studying in BSSM in second year, uh, and it's a privilege to be here. Uh, I believe today God's gonna do really great things, uh, encounters. Fire. Fire. <laughs> and this is my adopted daughter. She got dreads just because she likes me. I'm joking. Hi guys, my name is Salome. I am from Switzerland, and I'm also doing BSSM, and I'm in second year. And um, this morning when we were worshiping here, I saw angels in the room, one here, one in the back, and one over there. And they were huge, huge. And I saw how rain was falling on everybody. And I believe God is going to heal people today, mentally, physically, and also in the spirit. So get ready. It's going to be a good day. 
Wow, Salome is amazing. You're amazing. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> I'm loving you guys so much. This is the best. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Um, thank you, Jesus. My name's Abby. I'm on Richie's team. Um, and uh, yeah, when Salome was talking about the wells, I was so excited because um, I saw wells in the spirit as well. There's deep wells here. Um, there's deep, deep wells here. <sighs> And I feel like the Lord's like, it's not just the history that this house, uh, <laughs> it's not just the history of this house, um, but it's in each and every one of you. You all are deep wells. And um, I don't know if you've ever thought about the significance. You're the only church I've ever been to in my entire life that stomps instead of claps. Can we do a little stomp? Hey. Wow, Jesus, thank you for the wells. 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 Hey! Wow, 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 wow. And I just hear the Lord saying, you're not dry. Wow, there's no, wow, you guys are thick. It's, woo, it's drippy. <laughs> it's drippy in here. And I'm, just, I'm really, really expectant and really excited. And, um... Yeah, from the bottom of my heart, well, I've heard the Lord say, maybe we should stomp again. Let's just do it again. <laughs> wow, thanks, God. Thanks, God. Oh, thanks, God. Yeah, I'm just really grateful to be in this place of depth and of glory and of encounter. And um, yeah, thank you, Jesus, for this place. Tonight's going to be wild. It's a daytime. Daytime. Daytime's going to be wild. Let's go, God. I'm from the UK. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I just, um, Jesus wants to meet you today. That's all I have to say. Kentucky, um, but the last four years I was living in Hawaii, that's where I met Rich, I was also one of his Bethel School of Technology students, and uh, yeah, meeting him also changed my life, <laughs> I think that. She's, she's got a crazy story, she came from a conservative background, had to wear dresses, not allowed to cut her hair, and she was the crazy one, she wore pants and cut her hair. And look at it now, look at it now. <clears throat> Crazy, eh? Never, never know who's with you. Never know who's with you. You know, I, f I feel like um, the thing that God's laying on my heart right now isn't maybe for one specific person. It may be, it may be only one person, but... Um, 
I've never been someone who necessarily felt um, the power of the Spirit. I believed that no matter if I didn't fall down, if I didn't shake or anything like that, I never believed that I was receiving anything less than the people who were experiencing that. But um, in December, we had a speaker who came. I'm also a second year student, and we had a speaker who came. And at the end of, he shared for two days with us. And at the end, I don't even remember why he specifically prayed this for us, but he prayed for the gift of tears, which I didn't know that was a gift. <laughs> um, but I feel like um, when 2022 came, I've received that. I, I don't know why, but in almost every service I go to, even at school, I just cry. Um, and that never happened to me before. I feel like that's no less of an experience from God than any other kind of manifestation that you could see. Um, so I just really want to pray if there's anyone in this room who feels like they, they have been going after God and they haven't been discouraged or any less determined uh, to go after him, even if you haven't experienced something physically um, from him. If you want to stand up, I just want to pray for you. I want to jump on that because she said her husband hadn't cried in 15 years. And just two day, days ago, he cried. There's something about if you haven't cried in a very long time, it's five years or 10 years, or whatever it is, and you numbed your heart. And Jesus said he was never far from tears. Uh, I believe the Lord wants to soften the heart and unlock you today. This is uh, coming from a conservative lady taking a risk. This is faith that pleases the Lord coming from a conservative man that saw something he'd never seen before, it moved him to a place that faith that pleased the Lord. If that's you and you know that's you, I want you to stand as quickly as you can out of faith. God, I just thank you for the hearts of these men and women standing in the room right now. And I just thank you that you have always been touching them. You've always been pursuing them, even if it's looked different than the way that it's seen in other people. And God, right now, I just release the same breakthrough that was released over me just a few weeks ago. And I thank you that you're going to start experiencing them in a new way. They're going to start receiving new things from you. I don't, I don't even know if there is a scripture for it, but I do just pray for the gift of tears over them, the way that I've been experiencing it myself. That's beautiful. You feel the faith in the room. The Lord's pleased. Oh, man, and make the criers cry more, God. I believe Jesus would work in team and uh, so this isn't me giving a gap to people I believe the way that he came to this earth he came not to be the one man show but he said all of you come with me let's do it together and he modeled what it looked like to empower people not to create space and opportunity and that's how he did the world so I'm just trusting God to, to do things so yeah South African elephant <laughs> uh, my name is Destiny I'm from South Africa um, yes, sir. Destiny is here. Um, and one of one of the things that South Africa is the best for is food, and we know how to eat and drink. And this week I've probably been the drunkest I've ever been in my life. And I really felt like there's an invitation. Wow, there's an invitation for us to sit at the table and to feast and drink. And it's not because, like, you're qualified to or you have, you have a ticket to. It's because you're part of the family. Wow. And I really feel like there's going to be some people that are literally just going to feel the power of the Lord this week at work to a point where you don't even know what to do. Don't know what to do. Like, we don't graduate, right? So, like... Yeah, I feel like there's people that are hungry and are thirsty in the Lord saying, come drink and come oh, eat. Thank you, God. This, is, this is your table too. Thank you, God. Wow. And you get to walk in, open the fridge, and just eat and drink. Thank you, Jesus. Um, wow. 
Before I pray for that, I actually have a quick word, um, if that's okay. For the lady wearing mustard um, top, yes. You understand quickly? Oh, it's my friend. Uh, what's your name? What? Andrea? Let's go. Wow. Andrea, come up here real quick. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, something made you want to lay hands on Andrea. Wow. What an amazing person. Wow. Yeah, I just really felt like the Lord was unlocking your voice in this next season. And he is giving you an upgrade in the spirit. And I even see, I even see, um, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know if you're right, but I see like a writing gift on your life. Um, a way to really share, to really share the heart of Jesus in the most simple way. And I feel like through that, your voice is going to be unlocked. And it's not just going to look like you being loud, but it's going to look like you being heard. Wow, because you have something to say. And you, wow, you carry, you carry the heart of the Father so well. And you carry the tenderness of the Holy Spirit so well. And I, and I just see all these people coming around you and just lifting you up. And just, like, just putting you right up there and being like, yes, Queen, Queen Andrea. Wow. There's no more silencing. There's That's no what more, I said over you when wow. I was here last. There's no more remember. time to hide on the wall and be a fly on the wall. It's actually time for you to stand up and take That's charge what I said because you you're a boss. Too. Wow. You're a you're a boss, and I and yeah, and I really feel wow. I already feel like um, I don't even know if you have an interest in this. You can ask the Lord, and if it's wrong, you can throw it in the trash can. But um, I really feel like a writing gift, like even in books and and like spoken word. Um, and I even think I even think some some songwriting too. Wow! And I feel like you're gonna release something that the world's never heard before. Wow! Oh, yeah. Jesus! Oh, I like you. God, touch you, God. Today, 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 God. Oh, there's no coincidence. You keep getting called out. He says you're important. A spotlight needs to come on you. You've been hidden way too long. Way too long, way too long, way too long. It's time for that light to shine. It's time for that light to shine. Wow! <laughs> Daniel, man, this is, a, this is a hero right here. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm, my name is Daniel. I grew up here in Federal Way, Washington, most of my life. So I'm one of you guys, local. And uh, I would love to be a member as well. <laughs> Hey guys, um, I'm Seb, I'm from the UK. Um, yeah, I just feel the power of God and His, His glory resting here so strong. Um, yeah, and I saw actually um, the, the guy in the, in the pastel green, like over there. If, could you just stand, is that right? Oh, here we go. I, I just saw um, like this fire coming upon you and resting on you. Um, and I believe if you just want to put your hands out or, or receive however you want, I, I believe the fire of God's going to come upon you. Um, and I saw as you yield and, and offer yourself as a sacrifice, the fire of God's going to come upon you. Thank you, God. Thank you for this man. Thank you for his life. Thank you for the wind of the Spirit. I saw the, the wind of the Spirit coming to, to blow on that fire. And, and when, it, when a tree sets a light... Um, that's one thing, but then when the wind comes, it's almost unstoppable. So I thank you, Lord, for the, for the wind and the fire of the Spirit fire from this man. God. Fire of God. Thank you. Fire of God. Thank you. Thank you. If you feel that anywhere in the room, you can just take that. Thanks, God. Yeah, actually, if, if anyone's wearing, wearing green, generally, I saw the woman with the green headband as well um, but anyone wearing green I just felt that if you want to stand I, I think the Lord is going to come in this fire right now thank you Lord thank you fire in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Lord thank you for your fire thank you for your fire Lord. thank you Lord thank you for these yielded places these yielded places Lord. I thank you for fire resting upon them Fire, fire, fire. Wow. 
Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, wind blow, blow, blow across this place. Blow on these people. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Matthew, I mean in Luke chapter 18, verse 15. The people were also bringing babies to Jesus for Him to place His hand on them. We had a baby dedication today. When the disciples saw this, when the um, disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to Him and said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And there's this moment where the disciples are trying to decide who's the best, you know? Who's got the best ministry? Who's got the most fire? Who's got the most authority in there? Who's gonna sit at your right hand? And, and there's this comparison that sneaks in. And Jesus says, bring that little child over here. And He brings a little child. And this little, and He says, this is what you need to be like. Oh, I've sensed the spirit of comparison that has snuck into the church, not this church, but into the church, Big C. And I feel like the Lord calling me to focus on the children, to dislodge a spirit of comparison in the religious sector, in the government sector, and over this region. And I've started focusing on children. The first meeting we went to, there was about 100 kids. The power of God hits them. This first little 10-year-old, the lightnings touch her. And they start just, a, a whirlwind started moving. All these kids started falling out around her. And I started to think, man, if God can do it, we went to another meeting. Faye grabbed the mic. She started prophesying over the teacher, Mr. Brown, in the chapel, K to grade five. Mr. Brown starts shaking under the power of God, the teacher. All the kids run over, start laying hands on Mr. Brown. He's weeping, he's sobbing. He's weeping, he's sobbing. Uh, El Trisha uh, grabs the mic and she starts, uh, and the kids start like praying for different things. I got about five minutes left and I get up and I think I better say something. You know, my team's basically just wrecked everyone. And I get up and out of my mouth says, kids, if you're hungry, stand up. And all these children jump to their feet. And then out of my mouth says, now rush the front. And these kids in chapel, grade, five, grade K to five. So imagine like five-year-olds to about 11-year-olds. They start running to the front. And one by one, the fire of God hits that place. And for the next hour, they're shaking, they're sobbing, they're weeping. They send an email out to all the uh, uh, parents saying, the Holy Spirit broke out in class. We had to cancel school. You, I saw this, <clears throat> I saw seven-year-olds dragging five-year-olds out of the building. And I thought to myself, my word, Jesus, you do, you still do wild things today. Nobody can escape the touch of God. No one can escape the touch of God. Started getting invited to all the different youth meetings. Now I did this as a prophetic act. I believe the Lord wanted me to focus on kids to dislodge that spirit of comparison and, uh, and for me to just take a spirit of, of child likeness. And then two nights ago, they invited me to speak at this conference and I was like, do you have any children? Are you taking care of any kids maybe in the evenings or something that we can get our hands on? And they're like, oh yeah, there's gonna be like 50 of them. I said, that's perfect. So as one of the conference speakers, I said, give me a session with one of the kids. And we went in it with our team. Faye and Salome led it for the most part. And I got up right at the end and uh, with some chocolate milk and some stuff. And, and we started praying for children, nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds. And the fire of God. Oh, it was unbelievable. Oh. And they were trying to bring babies to Jesus so that he could put his hands on them. 
and the disciples, the ones that have been walking with Jesus, says, rebuke them. No, no, you need to focus on the adults. You need to focus on the serious stuff. And Jesus came and he rebuked those disciples. He says, you need to be like a little child. Oh God, you're doing something in Pacific Northwest that can't be contained by age. That can't be contained by ethnicity. That can't be contained by language. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're releasing a multi-generational anointing in this church, a multi-generational anointing. The kids' ministry is going to explode, I prophesy. I prophesy over this church, there's going to be a move in the kids' ministry. It's going to be a ballooning that happens. I pray for the Holy Spirit to move in the kids' ministry. And God, I pray for children to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, on baby dedication day, God, we just say that olive branch, you're bringing that olive branch to kids, God. Oh, man, if you've got it, Jesus does not ever uh, discriminate based on age. He only, it's on heart. So I want you to put your hand in your heart and say, I repent for being an old fart. I repent for being an old fart. God, make me like a little child. Oh, let me rush the front. I'm so hungry. Say that out loud. Let me rush the front. I'm so hungry. Oh, God. They did studies and psychologists, and they did this test on geniusness. And they did it on five year olds, and 90% of five year olds tested as creative geniuses. But they got to the age of seven. Uh, 75% of seven-year-olds tested as creative geniuses. By the time they got to 12, it was 50%. And by the time they got to 21, it was 5%. God, wake up the little child, God. Oh, there are solutions for the realm of technology that are resting in the inner child inside of you. There are solutions for business that are resting inside the little child in you. There's solutions for family that are resting in the child in you. Say this after me, I repent for being an old fart. I say that in love and to make you laugh. I choose to be like a little child. And for thousands of years, there was a preparation. For thousands of years, they were preparing and preparing for the Christ to come. God had made a way on the earth. He brought the Jews. He brought uh, the synagogue. He brought the temple. He brought the ark. He created so many detailed plans so that God could come in flesh one day. There was the most detailed of preparation It was like the blueprint of blueprints. It was the architect of architects. The dates, the prophecies, the names meant something. Everything was connected, leading up to the birth of flesh, glory wrapped in flesh. Everything was building up to this moment. Everything was intentional. Everything was specific for this moment. How did he come? They never thought, imagine, like a little baby, the weakest of vessel, the most vulnerable of vessel, glory wrapped in flesh. Could this be God? Imagine just Olivia up there. Imagine. Surely he should be this magnificent being, this like a a little baby. God loves to take small things. He loves to take little keys and open big doors. But for thousands of years, everything was set up. Everything was set up so that Jesus could come. It's like the perfect story. And at the highest moment of Christianity, at the highest moment where the gospel was played out. Jesus comes to the earth. Knock, knock, knock. It's Joseph, my 
wife Mary, she's with a child. And the innkeeper looks at his register and he looks and he's like, I'm so sorry, there's, there's no space here for you. And I'm like, what were you thinking, God? You were, you, everything was planned out. Every detail was planned out for thousands of years building up to this moment. This was the high moment of history. This was the moment that divided the timeline before Christ and AD. This was the moment. This is the everything. The most famous man of all of history. If you're a Christian or not, the most famous man of all of history. More manuscripts, more, more evidence of his existence than the existence of Napoleon Bonaparte. This man is the, the most famous person to have ever walked the earth. And there's no space for him. Was there a mistake? Did you make a mistake? Did man make a mistake? This makes no sense. This is the what? Ever felt like a little bit of, God, not me. You can't choose me. Ever felt like I don't have it really together. I'm not the place for God to use. Ever felt like that? And I asked God, I said, God, why did you be, why were you born in a manger? And he said to me, I made no mistake. I came for unprepared places. And still today, he comes to be born in a manger. Put your hand on your heart. Oh man, in this little old fart, he came to be born. How crazy is that? God, that's a bad idea. These are bad ideas, God. I don't have what it takes. This is just a, this makes no sense. Why you? Why would he choose to be born in you? Still today, he's born in mangers. Oh. I grew up an anxious kid. You, you look at me and I'm, I feel like a king in this house, to be honest. Like I walk in here and everyone loves me. I like, it's my family here. You guys celebrate me like I'm a, like, you know, I'm, I'm the next, um, the next whatever. And I've been so humbled. But I, I grew up so insecure, so broken. Only heard the gospel at 17. Still when I heard the gospel, full of social anxiety. Like, didn't know what I was doing. Had a stummer and a stutter. Stutter and a stummer. I'll get it one day. But God chose me. He chose me. He chose Andrea. He chose this crazy, weird guy. And he still does that today. He, he, I'm telling you, you think that you, you think you're not God's plan. He still is born in mangers today, Alyssa. He's still born in mangers. But I'm going through a divorce. I'm going to be born in that manger. Oh, I just got kicked out of my church. Not this church, sorry. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to be born in that manger. Oh, I just had a miscarriage. I'm going to be born in that manger. You're going to find me there. Oh, my father, my father had a moral failure. I'm going to be born and make you a father, a father in the church. told the first service, but Bill Johnson took an F on public speaking, became one of the greatest speakers in our generation. Chris Vallotton was bankrupt at 40. He oversees a $65 million organization. That's a bad idea. That's a terrible idea. It makes no sense. You didn't steward the wealth in the 40. You are. He loves to be born in I bet you I could interview Darren and you'd be like, he shouldn't be here. This right here, it's a bad idea. <laughs> but let me tell you, in a place that caused him pain, God is birthing a revival. 
where in his history, if you know his story, where revival caused pain to his family, there's an assignment to revival in this man's life. And from a manger, there's gonna be a move of revival that comes from this place in the most significant way. If you ever get a chance, you gotta hear his story. Unreal, unbelievable. And Gail's story. Oh, the best. I cry every time. God wants to heal people here today. God wants to touch people here today. But let me tell you who he likes to touch. He likes to touch mangers. If you haven't got your life fully together, if you don't feel like you're the most anointed person in the room, if you don't feel like you're the best person in the room, if you don't feel like you're the best Christian, the best dad, the best son, whatever, God wants to touch you. (sighs) Saul, he was killing Christians and God said, perfect guy to write the rest of the Bible. God, he's the modern day Taliban leader. It's perfect. Perfect to write the rest of the Bible. Perfect. David, his dad didn't even believe in him. The prophet comes and says, one of your sons will be king. Bring out all your family. He pulls out all the family except for David. David's in the field. Maybe someone here, you've never had a father that's believed in you. Never had a dad. He was absent, not present, never spoke a word of life over you. You're perfect to be a king. It's my Jesus. It's my story. And on that day when you stand before him, he's not going to look at you and all your great works. He's going to say, that was my manger that I was born in. I was born in that broken place. And for unto us, a son was given. And for unto us, a child was born. And he will be known as wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace. But where was the son and child known for that? In the manger. You're wrecking me now, God. You're blowing my mind. You're blowing my mind. Me? I can't believe it. Man. your hand in your heart I want you to think of the most embarrassing the thing that you think is the thing that's rejectable about you the thing that is your weakest place the thing where hurt entered you the wound that hurt entered you the thing that you're hiding and I want to propose to you this that's where Jesus wants to encounter you right in your insecurity The Bible, the Passion Translation says this, your weakness is a portal to his power. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine where your weak spot is because I want a portal of power to touch you. And with that presented before you, your insecurity, your weakness. As a little child, I want to ask you the same question I asked the chapel. If you're hungry for him to touch you there, Maybe it's your broken body and you've been suffering with, especially people on the left arm. I see just, there's been pain from a stroke or there's been someone with their left side has just been uh, hurt by an accident. There's people here where there's like, there's, there's numbness in their body and the Lord wants to bring restoration. There's people with neck issues, long-term conditions, five, 10 years. There's people that have come from church pain and church hurts. There's people that were abused by their father that are sitting in this room and haven't told people and haven't fully walked into healing. There's people that know they're called to ministry, but ministry hurt them and ministry um, cut them up. There's people here that know that they're called to business, but they're too scared to study. Oh God, I want you to, with your weak space, just like those children in chapel, I want to ask you this question. If you're hungry, why don't you stand? If you're hungry for a touch from God, why don't you stand? Oh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you, and open your hands right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would pour your fire out on the manger, God. 
that you pour your fire out just as the Magi brought gifts which are actual Daniel's treasures. God, you would bring the gifts, God, and you'd put them in the manger. You put them, ma- them in the manger. Put the gold and the silver in the places of weakness, Lord God. Someone's just gone through a relational breakup and the Lord says, I'm gonna encounter you in that place. That place is my doorway that I'm gonna touch you in. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch them right now. If you have tears in your eyes, I want you to run to the front as quickly as you can. The Lord wants to touch you. If you're feeling fire in your hands right now or a vibration on your heart, the Lord says, I wanna touch you. Run quickly to the front if you can. Come as quickly as you can. And my team, just come and put hands on them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would come in fire. If you're trusting for a healing in your body right now, there is the glory realm has opened up because of the gospel. The Lord wants to come into your broken body. He wants to come into the manger of your body and He wants to be born again there as mighty God. God, we pray for the healing power of God to rest in this room. We declare backs would straighten up, scoliosis to be healed in Jesus' Name. God, strengthening necks, opening up ears, Lord God, uh, rejuvenating energy levels where thyroid has been difficult. Holy Spirit, I pray for fire in the hearts in Jesus' Name. Fire in the hearts in Jesus' Name. Fire in the hearts in Jesus' Name. More God, more God, more God, more God. Oh, there's a mother in the house and as I've been talking about children getting filled with the Holy Spirit. There's moms in the house that said, oh, I wanna be a mom like that. Holy, I feel like you're supposed to come to the front and receive. So moms in the house, if you've sensed that, I want you to run quickly. Holy Spirit, pour out your grace on the mothers, on the Marys that would steward the babies. We're disciples that said, no, the children should not be focused on. Let me tell you, the church says that often because they're not the the tithe payers. God, we declare the moms are significant, stewarding the next legacy of revival. Holy Spirit, pour out your grace on mothers in the room. If you're a mom in the room, lift your hands. Fire on them now in Jesus' name. Oh, the fire of God on them in Jesus' name. The fire of God resting on them in Jesus' name. Oh, Holy Spirit, pour out your love, God. Pour out your love, God. Pour out your love. Pour out your love. Pour out your love, pour out your love, pour out your love. Oh God, you're gonna touch people. This is my favorite place.